Hello everyone, welcome to this week's Life on the Hulls. I'm Ross, I'm building a 12.7 metre cruising catamaran out of composite foam core materials. If you're new to my channel, go back a couple of weeks ago, I put up a video of basically a complete up-to-date where we're at uh, with our build currently, and also there's a review video there, I'll put a link up here for you to just jump onto, that'll give you the last 12 months in a hurry, and, uh, and, and just show you where we're at. Now this week I'm gonna do a hell of a lot of boat building. I've got bulkheads to put in, I've got templating to do, we've got polishing, we've got laminated, we've got pretty much all happening this week and, uh, and pretty much try to do it all myself. So that's the challenge. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe and uh, certainly please make a comment. I love the interaction, I get some great feedback and some sensational comments that uh, really do help me along the way. So let's get into it. I'm at the stage where I'm starting to fill in areas and just get parts ready for when I ultimately lock this deck down. Now I've got it all pretty much in place exactly where I need it. So the important thing is now I can either progress along with joining the deck down or get all the internal bulkheads made ready for that process. Now I think I'm better off to actually make these parts. I've got the room and the space right now, whereas in about a month's time I'm not gonna have any space in my factory. I've got a big load of kayaks arriving from Canada and the reality is I'm gonna be short of space. So what I'm trying to do is just get these things made as I can and then uh, and then basically have them ready to slide in the minute this deck goes down and that'll speed the whole process up long term. I've been working on getting it fitting pretty much correctly all the way around and that's been a really good process for me because it allows me time to think rather than going head first into something and then going, oh, I forgot that. I'm trying to get everything done right now as I can. So the rear of the uh, saloon has quite a void and you'll see it here on the plans here, this area here needs to have an intersecting bulkhead to fit in there. Now there's no point in making an extra bulkhead to go onto the foam that's there. I've actually beefed that up already. I made sure when I was laminating the rear of the bulkhead I increased the stiffness, the laminate and the foam by uh, 10 millimeters, which actually has increased that bending stiffness and the uh, obviously the rigidity of the back wall. But it does need this intersecting bulkhead to fit in to this section here. Now I have another bulkhead slightly forward of this one uh, over here, and very importantly, that is going to form some of the structure. But I need to tie this bulkhead in here. So what I've done is I've actually made a template of this bulkhead and uh, out of MDF strips. Very important that. Uh, you get a quick of templating bulkheads and I've done it like this. So that now can be transferred onto 20 mil foam and I'm gonna double up the thickness of the laminate. It's going to be a layer of 300, 600 double bias, another 300 CSM, another 600 double bias peel ply. That will fit in to the wall there, then be laminated and tabbed, uh, filleted and tabbed from both sides. Uh, thereby joining the hull and the deck. Now I'm not going to put this in until I lower the deck, but I do need to make this before I lower the deck. Uh, obviously I want to have this this uh, bulkhead exactly right, so that when I do lower the deck, I can just bog it in and then uh, and then essentially tab it and, and complete the structure. Now you'd think it would be safe to assume that this template would directly transfer to the port side, I'm over on the starboard side here, but uh, Remember, I'm building a boat, absolutely nothing is symmetrical, nothing is standard, there's not one straight line in this boat, so if I lift this out and put it over there, I guarantee it's not going to fit. Now, I've just discovered that I have conduit down on the chine line down in there, so automatically it's not going to fit, but it should give me an idea as to whether it is going to be close. And as is always the case, the bloody sheet's never big enough, so I'm gonna to have to splice and join foam to make these bulkheads. Um, that's not a problem with foam, you just gotta make sure that your lap join has, uh, is sufficient enough laminations over the top of the joint itself, especially when you're joining pre-laminated sheets like I'll be doing here. It's not really a, a problem, but uh, I don't like to, if I can avoid it, it sort of makes a lot of effort at the end. But this will be quite good. This one sheet, this Divinacell sheets are larger than the Garut stuff that I was using. Um, and I'll be able to get two bulkheads out of this template 
just with that overhang at the other end there is going to be a bit of a problem but I can uh, I can certainly add that no problem at all and in fact that's probably good that way because that'll add a little bit more structure right where it's needed in that compression point. So once I finish marking up these bulkheads I'm actually going to mark it on the sheet so that I have a rough guide when I laminate the sheet I'll know pretty much what I have to do with it and uh, with having the marking on it that'll transfer the through the cloth and ultimately should be able to see it and then it'll make cutting a lot easier at the other end but I'll transfer this one over I should be able to get this almost um, two bulkheads out of this one shoot just by rolling it over. Perfect, and then the excess will basically give me the ability to do the two end parts. It's switch day here. I've got to do a whole heap of work in my factory and I've had a monster clean up in here to just get to the point where I can start laminating some sheets. Thing is, when you're working down there on the boat, you've got to keep coming back and you tend to drop stuff and not put it away. I like to put stuff away, not down. But uh, today I've had to re-rig and find room for my machine, my refrigerator, my compressor. Um, just in amongst this massive deck mold here but now that I've got it set up it means that I can continue on with working on this as well as the laminating of the extra bulkheads I need before I can seal my deck down. I'm ready to start laminating the main bulkhead that's going to join the deck and the hull together right at the door. I've got my cloth ready up there and essentially this room now has been transformed from a storage room into a wet room again. I'm able to drop my blinds and run my uh, my extractor fan and essentially get back to work in the factory here. This is an area that I do all of my heavy spray up because I know that I can control the environment a little bit. I can get the temperature down. I can keep the, uh, the styrene uh, emissions um, caught in the filter. There's a lot of things to think about up here and also I've got uh, all my chemicals and everything up the back there, which uh, pretty much are all empty now. So big cleanups required at every stage. And the reset day is often worse than the actual work. I've got to do a lot of resetting because I'm limited for space. And I've got a container of kayaks coming from Canada right now that's going to basically fill this joint. So I've got to get as much done as I can now. Next morning, let's see if this sheet's gone off. I've basically um, got to make about five of these this week, so I'm just doing a little bit every morning. And uh, yeah, that's looking pretty good. It's actually smooth, it's nice and consolidated and, uh, and absolutely perfect. So I'll flip him over and we'll get cutting and do the other side before morning tea, before coffee, and, uh, and then I'll get on to some other stuff. Now I'm gonna make the trim off this excess here because what will happen is as I lay the new laminate it will actually bridge and create an air bubble on the side. I want to have good fine edges to uh, to work with so I'll trim off any excess around the sheet and then I'll be able to just get laminating again and let that new new layer droop down, trim it off nice and neat and then basically I'm ready to use it to make our bulkheads. Look here, uh, this wall will actually come all the way down and that's intersecting right down in there. We're going to have a couple of conduits down along the floor here which will um, uh, facilitate power to the motors but also I need to run a fuel line across the back there all the way to the other side for fuel transfer, polishing and cleaning. So this, this cupboard down right there will likely be an area where I'll have some extra fuel filters for that bypass. And, uh, and obviously we're going to have some other electrics and stuff up in there. But yeah, this is um, 
certainly look in the business now. So it's starting to look like a boat cabin and I'm getting closed in. Uh, this wall actually going to go further back and join onto that bulkhead. Uh, just I uh, haven't quite shaped that yet. I've just got to shape that on an angle and then uh, we'll epoxy that in, put a fillet in here, glue it in. And this area can be essentially complete. This here is actually a robe. Um, and a small cupboard underneath the galley, which actually will have the hot water system in it. You can see my problem down here. I've got some conduits. I'm just going to simply cut around them and re-glass it, but I am going to reinforce it with some, some um, heavy duty cloth wherever the cutout is um, i'm better off to get a fit around those bulkheads there's going to be a lot more um, structure around here with wardrobes and the like but yeah that's going to be really really good when we were on the boat the other day and we tried to look over the roof to the nose of the boat we realized that i am so short that the way it is at the moment i'll never be able to to um, drive the boat sail the boat so um ross has come up with a solution with some steps to make it um, higher so I can see over the top and he can leave me at the helm. Um, so guess what job I got today, rather than finishing the windows I've been working on for the last couple of weeks. I've got to polish a mold. And apparently I'm supposed to sound really upbeat about this. <laughs> Yay, <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Well, so what are you no, going to do? I actually <laughs> like doing it. I actually like doing this kind of stuff. It's very satisfying and it's mindless. So um, I'm going to clean it with some soap and water and then I'm going to um, wet sand it with some 800 and then some 1200 to get a nice smooth finish. But I'm only going to do it up to here because we're only using this bit. We're not using that section. But you probably recognize this. These are the steps that or the mold for the steps that are inside the boat to go down to the um, the main cabin. Um, so it should tie in really nicely and it'll look the same rather than creating something different. So I'm gonna get on with it and you can see how nice and smooth it will be at the end. I don't know if you can see, but it's a little bit um, rough. Like it feels this texture to it, it's not smooth. And that's because Ross, having used it, left it out in the sun so that we had some space to do with the stuff. And the weather and the dust and the dirt and everything of the yard is, is really, it's not too bad. It won't take much to do, but um, it means we've got to repolish it rather than just use it after we pulled the other mold off. If it had stayed inside, we might have got away with it, but we didn't know we were going to use it. So hopefully it won't take me too long. Now the region that Janet was talking about is this area here. This is an older design catamaran and uh, part of the sort of, I guess the original sort of shape that these boats were coming out in. Now the problem I have is that this step here is about 50 centimetres high. Now, firstly, that's too far to be stepping up in one go to get to the helm every time. So what I was trying to do was come up with a solution that was going to Firstly, look consistent with the rest of the boat, and secondly, not be an ad hoc add-on that I've just added a small steps here, could potentially be dangerous, and I also wanted it to look like it fitted in with the rest of the boat. Obviously, consistency is important. The other issue I had is that when Jack is here, you know, I can clearly see over the top of this roof here, but I, I can only just see the bows of the boat from up here, and I'll show you what that looks like from up here. Um, remembering also, I'm going to be have another hard top that's actually going to be about this high, so it will elevate this position here another eight, six or eight inches, and that is really going to affect even my vision going forward. So, in reality, I need to lift this up to about this height to really make this a functional boat for myself. For anyone else that needs to helm the boat, obviously not everyone six foot two and a half or six foot three like myself. Um, a lot of people are in that smaller range and good vision outside over the top of this boat is so critical. The other thing too, there will be a cutout here where we'll be able to have another roof above here that actually gives us shelter from the elements. But there's a whole gambit of things that need to be dealt with in this area here. And it's only now that I'm able to come to the conclusion that I can start to think about these things now that I have this deck sitting in place. Now, I wanted to ensure that whatever I made here, 
didn't impact on the doorway. I'm going for as wide a door as I can get to give that real feeling of space. And other than that, to make sure that whatever I put here really did suit the purpose and wasn't dangerous when you're trying to climb down uh, from the helm position down onto the cockpit floor. I'm also trying to get good um, social engagement from the helm position down into the cockpit. Obviously, you might be sitting up here, up the top here, uh, helming the boat while you've got a, a group of people down here. You don't want to be disconnected from those people and also have good connection into the saloon as well for the person who may be needing to be alert whilst on watch on passages. So there's a whole heap of things and I think by making that staircase that is already part of this boat uh, integrate into this section here. So I've done a drawing here. This is uh, old school Photoshop. Uh, I've basically done a quick drawing of how I would like to integrate those stairs into this section here and make it sort of look like it never happened. And, and that's really important. It also gives me the advantage because of the height of the stairs, it elevates the helm position to where I need it to go. I do need to do some other little modifications over here, but that will give me around about 1.2 meters of floor space by about 80 centimeters of floor space directly below the helm. I'm also aiming to do some other modifications up here uh, around the window to give me a good helm station where I can pretty much control all of the winches and all the lines and all the navigation can be done from up here as well. So there's a lot to do here. It's great to be at this stage of the build where I can actually start to really think about how this is going to work out. All right, so Janet's finished the 1200. It's come up really well. Just the beauty of fiberglass is that it can be re um, rejuvenated quite simply. That's been what, an hour? Yeah. Hour of polishing or hand polishing with wet and dry. And now we're basically just gonna put a bit of, bit of cutting compound on it. Just smear that on like this. And you only need about that much. Yeah. We're only doing to here because I don't need the bottom part. How'd you go? Yeah, good. All done? Yeah, it's all done. We're ready to go with cool. the next bit. So you can... Do a few, few uh, a release agent. We'll put a sealer glaze on it to seal it. That looks absolutely amazing. Look at that. Three years sitting in the sun after I'd already polished it and it's back. And this is the good thing about these moulds is whoever ends up with these moulds, they're going to be able to rejuvenate them very, very simply. Just with, I mean, this is taking Janet two hours to do this one. The part's ready to go. All we need to do is put on the release agent and we're ready to go. Good job. Thank you. Not a bad apprentice, eh? Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's very satisfying, isn't it? It is. I just do as I'm told. Oh, <laughs> don't do that shit. I think I'd do what I'm told. <laughs> well done. No, we're ready to go. That's great. Thanks. Now, a long, long time ago, I established the bulkheads for the beginning of the sugar scoop and the entrance into the engine room. Um, I've just basically pulled the sides of the boat in with a ratchet strap and bolted the deck and the hull together to determine the final shape. Now this is pretty close. I've already been down in there and it's uh, it's pretty confined spaces down in there. So let's go and have a look. Right, so the area I'm talking about is here in the stern cabin and it's actually behind the bunk and I've deliberately left the joining of the um, bunk to the deck bulkhead until I get all of this sorted because this is an area that has to be in before I drop the deck down and seal it. So I'm still anticipating lifting the deck up but I should be able to put this bulkhead in prior 
to actually lifting the deck and uh, and and then I'll have an exact position when it comes back down with which to tie it all together. So we're talking about the bulkhead that fits in here. It's a very, very tight space and it actually separates the engine room from the rear sugar scoops, which I'm really happy about because if I ever get a flood into that back compartment, I intend to be able to seal it off. All right, so I've got my bulkhead here now. The problem is it's very narrow in here, narrow enough just for me on my own, let alone putting a bulkhead in, but I actually worked out I should be able to make the bulkheads and still get them in and out uh, before. <laughs> We have too much grief before I uh, start to really lock this whole thing down. But this bulkhead goes in like this. It's actually a wider bulkhead when I finish it. This is only half of it. There is another part of it that intersects onto the chamfer panel up in there. And this is one of the reasons why I had to get these bed bunks organized because they're giving me access across here, uh, across the engine room, good solid access. Down in here. This bulkhead is going to have an entrance large enough to be able to get in behind it to where the rudder stock is and uh, and the autopilot obviously and the rudder sensor so I do have to be able to get in and out of there now I actually am going to totally avoid having a hatch on the deck uh, on the top of the sugar scoops. I initially thought I'd put it in the stairs of the sugar scoops. I'm going right away from that. We get enough swell and enough conditions here on a daily basis to have a following sea go right up the back of our steps. So I'm, I'm gonna to totally avoid that. I don't like it on a boat. I think uh, having a hatch opening on the rear deck of a boat is very dangerous. No matter how well it's drained, you're always gonna get water ingressing into the engine room. And I'm totally avoiding that. I'm either gonna have access through here uh, through the back wall of this cabin or through a side hatch on the walkthrough transom area. Now that's a little bit of a sensible idea. I could put in an escape hatch type thing where I can just slide my legs in and get down into the rear of the engine room. Now there's another piece that has to go in over here which joins onto the internal side of the chamfer panel and the bulkhead there. Basically it's a flat piece that goes across here into here. So I'm going to go and grab that now. The second part of this bulkhead, I've just been up and had a couple of trims just to get the top off. I'm going to try to tidy this up a little bit. It's pretty much not going to be that accurate but it's got to fit in the gap there. <laughs> She's out neat down in here. And yes, it's, uh, it's been a bit of a long day in and out of here, but once this is derived, it's gonna make life a hell of a lot easier for me. Great thing is it's gonna give me perfect placement for the back of the boat. There's a huge bulkhead that goes right across the back underneath that lounge suite dinette, but I do need to jack this up before I can action that one. But, uh, this piece will go hopefully now fits. Close here, it's pretty close. You can see this one here now fits pretty snugly in there. I'm just going to trim off these little bits here because the module is affecting it. Now, this will be tabbed back. This module is glassed in and epoxied in, it'll be tabbed back to the module on this side. But on the back side, I'm going to do a four layered tabbing to the back, and it'll obviously be tabbed all the way through here and glued in place but yeah that's going to be fantastic now i just hope i can get it out and more importantly get it back in oh yes this whole bloody project everything's within that much it's unbelievable where there's a will there's a way and there's always a window so this is where it's coming out there's always a window uh, 
That's it. <laughs> That's the part. All right, sheet number two is half done. Just flip it over. Alright, I got my stern bulkhead on the port side here. It's been a bit of a um, battle getting it to fit with the roof on, but you know, I've got a sheet laid up here. I was hoping to get two out of one sheet. That's just not going to happen. I'm going to have to lay up yet another one of these sheets to get this one done. But I'll, uh, I'll mark this one out. It's a bit hard to cut it today because it's a bit wet, but uh, I'm just going to get it all marked up and then I'll get myself ready to laminate on Monday another sheet for the starboard side. What have you been up to? Oh, um, cleaning the putty out the windows and I've finished. Did you finish? Yeah. Well yeah. done. Congratulations. <laughs> the apprentice has finally ticked off a job. Pretty happy about that. It's only taken five weeks to get those uh, window inserts, but it's been a pretty rugged month, hasn't it, darling? Yes, it has. It has, yeah. Well, we won't elaborate. It hasn't been a great month. But anyway, we're going to put some bulkheads in. Oh, Jan's got some music on. That'll blow my copyright. <laughs> Yeah, we'll turn it off. We'll just talk over it, won't we, Dan? Yeah. Alright, yeah. oh, no. getting some help putting this bulkhead in. It's a bit of an awkward one. Alright. Right. Yeah. Oh, it's good out of help, I'll tell you. My back's happy about it. Okay, Jen. Our next task is to fit that shape into that hole that doesn't fit anywhere near like the shape. So it's got to go in flat, like slide in and then hopefully stand up. So. Well, we're going to put it down in there and then we're going to try to get it flat and get it in underneath the bed. No, that's not going to be easy. Um, right. So this should just fit in, the tip would fit in, but it was thinner. Down in Janet's, Janet's um, engineering room. <laughs> Apparently I'm going to be the, do all the fixtures and fittings in the engine room. I've got different ideas. You know what you might be better, is if you pull the bottom towards you. Pull the what? The bottom towards you. Yeah, that's the problem with the bottom. Come towards, yeah. If you, you can push it from that side, can you push it from the other side? Okay, so see this line, this black line here. Yeah. Because I had it drawn on the peel ply and I ripped the peel ply off, I lost my reference, which yeah. is a lesson. Don't ever mark on peel ply. Don't, don't take your peel ply off. <laughs> but the way you scribe, you just, if you even if you might have a centimeter, you have a, a pen, a centimeter, you can actually run it along the hole, and that gives you the exact line that you need to cut. Okay. So. Like something like that, yeah. you can see that clearly needs to come off. Same deal over here. Can we hold that? No. Yeah. Yeah, if you can hold that. Right, so see this here? See how it's yeah. pinching? If I see there, see how I've got room there? Yeah. If I run the pen and just run it along like that, yeah. I know that if I cut that off, that's going to slide into place. Yeah. Hopefully. And the same deal over the other side, but we've got to get it out now. That could be the trick. You alright? Yeah. <laughs> Close quarters in here, isn't it? Yeah. I don't want to have bad breath. Have you got the, um, have you done the other side? Do you need to do yeah, the inside? Yeah, see that. What I'll do is I'll just get a flap disc and I'm going to have a look over there. 
Oh, yeah. Look at the pores on my nose. <laughs> <laughs> Over here. <laughs> Look at the boogers up my nose. <laughs> Booger check. Still booger check before we go and film. Oh. Booger check. Got to make sure there's no bears in the cave. <laughs> Down here, we're going to trim along here as well, and then that'll hopefully fit in. And that's pretty much that bulkhead done. That's going to be. That, this is a major structural bulkhead. So once I get this bulkhead in place, I've now got no access to the rudder and the autopilot and the hydraulic ram that are going to drive the rudder. So I'm going to put in a door here the original boat didn't have anything here didn't have a bulkhead at all but um we want it because a lot of boats crack on the chamfer panel when they haven't got this stern bulkhead here <laughs> this will be a door around about big enough for me to be able to get through but it'll be one i can seal with four hatches and a, a seal on it obviously but i'll be putting carbon unis or unidirectional carbon around the outside of the door to make sure that that is a really a rigid structure and um, that's quite easy you just laminate that into the bulkhead itself but yeah that'll be good but i think that'll um and that'll stop the rain from getting into the bilges because at the moment we're getting rain yeah. coming in that's coming into the bilges but then we'll have a swimming pool out there that, oh that's right yeah, you, that's you, cool. you can lock it up that's good that's taking me three days to fabricate that piece of timber a uh, piece of foam and i'm ready to do the other one tomorrow so cool